People like Barry Goldwater in the 40s, 50s, and 60s were the first wave of resistance to globalism. So was the John Birch Society. An individual, I would have to say, marks the second wave would be someone like Steve Quayle or someone like Ron Paul. And then I mark and Drudge marks the start of the third wave. Though Drudge was a lot more successful than I was early on, Drudge and I started right around the same time, 1995 or so. Steve Quayle's going to be with us 20 minutes or 30 minutes in the next hour, then our reporters join us. This is a brief segment, but I was just talking to Steve Quayle during the break. He's never been so on fire. Everything he was saying was connecting all the dots. Steve, please repeat to the audience what you just said uh, to me over the phone during the break. Well, Alex, I believe that the whole Hillary for presidency uh, facade that all of the news vomit brokers, meaning the big networks, are putting forth is just to keep us occupied. It appears, based on the events taking place today, that and all the executive orders being signed in the last couple of weeks and all the United Nations talk, it will be a miracle, literally, if we have an election. And, you know, I think you and I have talked about this. Let me read you one of Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals. Uh, radicals, okay? Hey, a new word, radicals. Ridicule is man's most potent weapon. There is no defense. It's irrational. It's infuriating. It also works as a key pressure point to force the enemy into concessions. Now, what's critical in that statement is to understand the denigration of Donald Trump, the absolute lies about Donald Trump, the absolute ridicule that is uh, going on ad nauseum. First of all, I find it interesting that people who have never done anything, never accomplished anything, are basically paid hacks are being funded by, you know, the billionaires in the background to take on Donald Trump. The reason that I said on George Norrie, coast to coast, before Donald announced his, or Mr. Trump announced his run for presidency, is George asked me on the air, I said, are you uh, endorsing? And, and at that point, he wasn't uh, Donald Trump. And I said, absolutely. I said, when I see who everybody hates or the people that hate him, I will stand with the guy always that speaks the truth. Well, that's key. Now, you were for Trump before he even announced. And I had people over the years reach out to me about Donald Trump and how he was a patriot. And I just wasn't paying attention. But he has been, uh, you know, really quietly getting ready for this for 30 years. Now, you, during the break, you, when we first got you on the line, you were telling me what you wanted to cover today. It was amazing how you were connecting the dots with, with, with Greece and with Russia and Ukraine and the Strong Cities initiatives, and suddenly all over the news, we're under UN command, and George Soros's emails are public, uh, how they admit they plan to replace us with jihadis. I mean, this is incredible. This is really happening. Well, and, and you've warned about it, I've warned about it. The UN takeover has already been taken over. And I think it's important that people understand uh, from the Greek newspapers, I put one up on my site, you know, it had to go through Google Translate. It's on my alert section, Alex. But the Ukrainians and Russians have started firing at each other. Russia's moved 40,000 troops. So it's not posturing. The other thing that's really troubling is when the whole situation in Turkey went down, I was one of the, and I was one of the first guys to say, look, we've got nuclear weapons there. And now and RT and the AP admit the base is surrounded with a whole bunch of nukes. What's, what's happening there? Why don't we just fly well, the nukes out? Yep, well, listen, the deal is, and I'm serious about this, every single, uh, you know, jellyfish congressman and senator, they should be absolutely livid because there's not just, you know, they say 90 uh, B-61 um, nuclear warheads over there. There are H-bombs at Inserlik. That is NATO's forward staging base. And Russia has effectively, I'm telling you this, they have gelded NATO by uh, going up with Erdogan and now the Turkish press is calling for, you're ready for this, the seizure of all those nuclear weapons. I said, if Erdogan gets the nuclear weapons and given to him by his friend in the uh, White House, we're in big trouble. And Alex, normally something of that consequence would be so great that you'd think everybody would be heralding it instead of just saying, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It really matters, ladies and gentlemen. Go look at, do an internet search on hydrogen bombs. You know, they say, oh, they're just... And by the way, this it. isn't hype. You, you, you were talking a month ago about how jihadis are backing Erdogan. You've got all, all, all these coups and counter coups. Now they're suddenly buddies with the Russians. When Erdogan was just shooting down Russian aircraft just a year ago, major power shifts. 
and, and by the way, the Russians have sent a bunch of troops in. Fighting is escalating in eastern Ukraine, and it's not even on our news. Not at all. And here's the thing. The, the, I, think, I think Vladimir Putin, again, I'm not a Russophile. I'm just saying truth is truth, okay? But because we've become a nation that bathes in lies, wallows in lies like a pig does in mud, that absolutely can no longer think, that chooses to basically be entertained instead of educated, we are ripe for the taking. And what I think is the, the point that everyone ought to realize this. Uh, stay there, stay there. we got to come right back. But, but again, a few newspapers are reporting it, but it's not a big news story. It should be. Stay with us. Steve Quayle is our guest, 30 minutes to the next hour. Then we're going to talk to our reporters who are on the ground in Wisconsin in the aftermath of days of civil unrest. Brought to you by George Soros and the Communist Party, and that's literally who the police say we're running. It was the Communist Party. We're also going to talk some about uh, True Legends, Episode 2, The Unholy Sea, a new documentary film available at truelegendstheseries.com. Uh, put out by Steve Quayle and his amazing crew. This is Discovery Channel quality and information you won't see anywhere else. True Legends, Episode 2, The Unholy Sea. There's a previous film as well, truelegendstheseries.com. Uh, for us here, we have the Hillary for Prison shirts. We have the Bill Clinton rape shirts. Just getting it out there. This guy settled rape cases. Oh, they claim they represent all the women. Uh, we have Living Defense, uh, the Parasite Cleanse. Uh, that is just all of the known herbs concentrated in plant extracts to really flush out your system. Uh, has an amazing effect. You can read about the different uh, rave reviews. That is going to sell out because it's so hard to source. So it's got so many ingredients in it. That's available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. And I want to thank all the listeners that do get the X2 and the Lung Cleanse and the Super Male Vitality uh, and the other products because these are great products number one but number two and just as importantly you're funding this operation and finally uh, Amerageddon the film that was a five million dollar budget is exclusively available on DVD at InfoWarsStore.com and when you get a second copy of it you get two of my films Fall the Republic and Matrix of Evil Free. I, I guess we sold out of America's Road by Design, so we had to stop offering that one for free and go to Matrix of Evil. That's excellent as well. Uh, but Fall of the Republic is really, I mean, that, that was made six years ago, and everything in it, unfortunately, has basically come true. It, it, it just blows people away when they see it. It's, it. it's what they call evergreen. It's more important today than it was back then. So the toll-free number uh, to call uh, and take advantage of that, America in the movie, get one copy for 1995, put it in your library, donate it to the library so that hundreds of people can watch it. Uh, it really exposes globalism from a fiction perspective and the invasion of America following an EMP by the United Nations. But then you get the nonfiction films with it when you get a second copy, two films free. That's four films for the price of two and a great way to give it to your friends, your family, your neighbors, your community. Uh, you're also welcome to show it to your church, as Gary Haven has said. You're welcome to put my films on access to television or air them on broadcast TV or do whatever you want. A lot of stations across the country are owned by patriots in California and New York, you name it. They just air my films uh, and, and on primetime TV sometimes, on UHF, VHF, and cable, and it ends up in the newspaper and it has a big effect. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Don't wait for orders from headquarters, folks. Go to the sound of the guns. People are ready to wake up to globalism. They're ready to take action against it. And the new film, Amerageddon, available exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. And I want to thank all of you that have purchased the film uh, for your support, not just of what Gary's doing and what I'm doing, but of this entire country and this entire world. Okay, I'm going to go now to um, our guest, Steve Quayle of SteveQuayle.com, to break down... Because just while he was talking about it, I was really ashamed of myself. I'm going to be honest. In the last few days, the Russians caught Ukrainian troops attacking people, shooting people, and blowing stuff up and attempting to blow stuff up inside Russia proper in a provocation. So Russia's moved a bunch of troops up to the border. They're rolling more troops now into uh, the eastern area of Ukraine that has seceded to Russia and has historically been part of Russia, Crimea, that Russia has fought five major wars of and dozens of small wars. I mean, it's just so many, you can, historians can't decide how many wars. 
Fighting intensifies in East Ukraine combat zone. I mean, this is being reported by foreign major newspapers. Ukraine Today, you name it. This is not really in our news. In our news, the Washington Post says, while the world is distracted, Putin escalates his war in Ukraine. Well, we're going to get the actual clip of his, his press conference a few days ago and what he said. But, but notice, I say I'm watching this, and I'm so busy following 2016 and Trump and the stock market and the announcement that the UN is going to run our local police and, and just Congress pursuing perjury charges against Hillary and uh, fake polls and Obamacare and l all these leaks and all this stuff that's happening that I get Steve Quayle on. And he goes, you know, a war is escalating. Russian FSB foils terrorist attacks plotted by Ukrainian intel agents in Crimea. That's RT. And, and, and again, there's been explosions, stuff blowing up, power lines getting severed. Uh, this is a real asymmetrical situation going on, uh, and you've got NATO massing troops right there on the border uh, in Poland and other areas with Russia. This is a really serious time to be alive. So if you're a radio listener, you hear me mentioning these headlines, I'm reading headlines in real time we're throwing on screen at Infowars.com forward slash show. This is what radio is like on television. You see basically everybody going to this format now. I'm proud of the fact Infowars trailblazed it and is the founder of it in this format. Uh, often um, imitated and many times duplicated. We actually uh, want to be made obsolete by defeating the new world order. There'll be new problems. We're not offering some utopia, but I don't want things to be this intense. I don't need things to be this riveting. I don't need to have my heart racing all the time. I don't need to be, you know, I mean, there'll always be corruption and stuff to deal with. We'll always be able to have a show, but, but I don't want it to be so incredibly cutting edge and so incredibly dangerous that I'm way out here on the tip of the spear. I want to dial back the evil. I want to end it if we could, but, you know, humans are inherently fallen, so it's this, we're always going to have problems. The issue is, this is real, folks. This is happening, and all over the world, there's major destabilization. So get into what's happening. You've got the floor, Steve Quayle. Please don't pause or thank me. Just take over, or, or I'll interrupt. Get into why all hell's breaking loose historically at this one time, and what the globalists are really planning. Steve Quayle. Well, this is a going for it, Alex. There's no holding back now. We've warned, we've warned, we've warned, and now it's all in play. The Internet goes down into foreign hands October 1st. I guarantee you there's a secret deal that the U.N. will consider anything that you, I, or anybody who's talking against They already admit that. I'm sorry. They already admit that they're going to apply the German and, 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 and French rules of censorship, and Soros got caught. I said I wouldn't interrupt. i got to back up what you're saying because you're saying it intuitively. Steve, it's admitted in his new emails. George Soros is running a whole group to target people that criticize radical Islam and shut us down. And now the mayor of London is saying he's going to arrest you if you criticize Islam, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's it, Alex. And here's the thing. Again, I want to say this because I wasn't clear enough the last time I was on your show last week. The plan is this, ladies and gentlemen, to generate a third world war under the Muslim auspices. And in it doing so, that provides the fulfillment of their prophecy that it will be on the back of a global nuclear conflagration that the Iman Mahdi comes on the scene. Now, Alex, I said that 20 years ago, and most people thought, you know, well, Ben, they thought everything that we were talking about was crazy. But here's the thing. We're now seeing Russia, say, and, and I just got an email from somebody saying, why are you guys kissing the Russians, you know what? I'm not. I'm saying this. Listen, it is counterintuitive to want the death of however many billion. And see, this is, this is where we are the most naive people in the United States, dumbed down, uh, uh, chemically emasculated from the xenoestrogens in the water. The bottom line is, is that, you know, I told people, I guess America got stupid when its sperm could no longer count. And it's because of, and you think that's a statement of, uh, of just, you know, being off the wall. Listen, we are seeing right now the implementation of a pre-World War III scenario. When Russia and China announced, uh, China actually announced shooting one of their new uh, satellites into space that is basically just going to be you can't break their encryption well what most people don't know is russia put some of their data on it too now they used to have a system by which if certain command centers of theirs go dead uh their uh, their military installations and all their hidden weapons are fired almost uh concurrently and simultaneously the doomsday plan you got it and they have another name for it and forgive me alex they used to talk about it all the time but here's the deal look at this alex 
We are, uh, what is it today? The 17th. The 17th of August. Well, the Israelis call it the Samson uh, uh, option, but I'm sorry I'm interrupting. Go ahead. No, that's the Samson option. You know, that's Israel. Uh, the Russians have, a, I think it's called the dead hand option or something like that. Samson option is Israel's very similar to it, and I'm sure we got it the same thing. That means bring but the whole world down. Yep, and here's the thing. You know, let me share this. I'm going to go to the 13th rules of radicals because I've got to tell you, look at what they're doing. This is why they're doing to doc, uh, Donald Trump. And it's why pick they're the so target. arrogant. It's why they're moving on every front. This is, They're making yeah, their move. Listen, pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. Cut off the support network and isolate the target from sympathy. Go after people. And listen to this, non-institutions, people hurt faster than institutions. So we're seeing this played out. And I believe, and I'm going to say this again, you know, God's got his Trump card to play. I can tell you when I make that statement, you know, I'll get so many hate emails, I might as well, you know, put them out as a hate chronicle. I, I, I forgot that you biblically mentioned Trump way before he announced. How did you do that? Well, here's the thing. I look at who a man's enemies are, and I think that uh, we're watching right now the total, if you will, the whole world, historically, when the odds are absolutely against speaking the truth, God always has what I call the ram in the bush, okay? And it's based on Abraham and Isaac and offer up Isaac, but God provided the ram for the sacrifice. It's the two sex. Yeah. I'm sorry? Do sex. Yep. So the thing is, is that where we're at right now is that it's all in play. It's, seriously, Alex, I don't know how you think at night when you, you know, try to shut down. I don't shut down very well. No, no, no. I mean, I used think, to. I slept great. Now I just dream about yep. work. At all. I mean, the entire night I'm just working. Well, you know, the, the bottom line is, and I, that's a, uh, an overused uh, statement of mine, makes people crazy. When you cut through all the crap, here's where we're at. We are at World War Three time. It's up to the living God and to decide when, uh, you know, his hand of protection is taken and off. And the average American is totally asleep. Yep. Yep, and, and this is... Uh, this is one of the most important things I've seen, and I, I am telling people, look, get it? Do you get it? The Internet you've known is going away. That's what Matt Drudge said when he was in your studio. And remember, Supreme Court judge. Okay, so let's take it up to now. On October 1st, the United Nations has handed the entire control of the Internet, the rules, the regulations, the DNC takedown orders, all of it, it is now happening. And, Alex, over the years I've been on talk radio and some generals in your area, uh, you know, multi-stars and more stars than people are aware of, basically have absolutely validated the U.N. troops. So when people say, where are they? I don't see them. You know, these are just U.N. vehicles being made. We're going Montana. under U.N. control, U.N. regulation yeah. under UNESCO. Uh, the, L Loretta Lynch, who has been a U.N. lawyer, for over 10 years, she worked for the United Nations World Criminal Court, and she's announcing our police are going under U.N. regulations. They are giving them U.N. orders. Absolutely. And now here's what people have got to understand. The, uh, the amount of weapons in this country that were pre-staged you and I did shows. I can I can remember the topics. I don't remember the years. Almost 15 years ago, even when Bo Gritz, Gritz, Gritz was talking about all the ships coming in to uh, the Los Angeles or Long Beach uh, shipyards. Uh, That's Seattle. my next question. A lot of that was old stuff. Now it's it's newer Abrams. It's newer uh, oh. fighting vehicles, armored vehicles, uh, brand new fighting vehicles by the thousands and thousands being de uh, pre-deployed. I've been I've confirmed uh, in rural areas everywhere to take on Patriots. They admit they're training to take on gun owners and veterans. Uh, this is insane. Well, it's not only insane, but the amount of minimum material that has been moved into underground. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen, under George Bush Sr., and you remember, Alex, that he closed down all these military bases. Well, they didn't go out of business. They didn't board them up. And you and they I just... said that wasn't the case because of our sources, and then they even admitted in that legislation, the Emergency Centers Establishment Act, that they retrofitted them as emergency centers for at least 3 million Americans. That was just the first announcement, and indeed they were set up, and that actually happened. Right, and so the thing is is that even in Montana, the amount of weapons is... And by the way, there are, there are pictures of... Uh, multiple rocket launchers and it's not all 
It's not all U.S. material. I've talked to C-130 pilots. I've talked to f Well, let's break pilots. down then how they would roll out different scenarios because obviously it's all deception. Start a war with the Russians, then claim that the Patriots are working with the Russians, then start going after us, and it's a U.N. globalist leftist attack here, but then a lot of Americans get in line with it because they believe they're fighting Russian agents. That's kind of the angle I see them developing. Well, yeah, and, and that it's not only that, but the Chinese are, you know, actively. I, I don't think people. I was going to say the Chinese will be the muscle of the new world order. That's been known. Yeah, and but here's the thing, okay? The amount of advanced weapon systems. When I had nothing to do with my better with my life in the early days of talk radio, I just, you know, read Jane's Defense Weekly and talked to a lot of different people. I'll tell you one thing I've learned, and and this is true. You can Russia will tell you what they're going to do. Russia will say, don't do it. Now, I get That's it. Right. Russia said, Russian keep deploying fan. missiles that we know yep. have nukes in them. We're going to have to strike them. Yep. And now we're even having to recognize the fact that, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, half of the U.S. military, who, by the way, declared war on God, cannot, and I'm talking the living God, you can be a Satanist, you can be a Wiccan priest, you can be whatever you want to be, you can be this, that, or the other thing, but if you're a Christian, you're out. But half of their flying assets aren't even uh, fit to fly. And now we've got the lowest uh, combat readiness. And by the way... So we've been sabotaged. We've been sabotaged. We've been sabotaged. We are destroyed from enemies within, traitors from within. And, and this is the thing that, that gets me. It's not the fact that you've got the biggest liar in history caught with their biggest hand in the biggest pocketbook of literally hundreds of billions of but dollars. the only way you save them is starting a war and then people get in line. Yep, and, and that, that, that there's still... Basically, people are saying, we don't care about that. I think this, Alex, I think that what you're seeing right now, in, uh, not only on, in the court of uh, earthly uh, perception, but in the court of heaven, all of the uh, indictments against the United States. You see, everybody used to think, we're the United States, we're the greatest. I love the country that we once had. I cannot even I, identify the country we now exist in. What, what you have done over the years is say, this is what's in play, this is what's in play, this is what's in play. What I've done over the years is saying, here is how it's going to play out, you too. But what I'm saying is this, is that we're now at the nexus point. We are at the point. We are at the uh, center of the hub of the bicycle tire. With point of no return, tires. event horizon. Let me say this to you then. I've talked about having storable food and stuff because I thought it was a possibility of economic collapse or other things. You see all the disasters and things. I mean, it's, it's just a smart thing to do. Old timers always did it. You know, uh, in modern times, look how domesticated we are. We don't. I've gone from thinking, okay, there's a chance it'll happen to a probability, now to a certainty, talking to all the top economists across the board. The question is just when, with the elites building armored fortresses in all these remote areas of the world, already leaving uh, I told people that six years ago, and it really accelerated. Now it's admitted, and, you know, the New York Times and the Washington Post and the London Guardian. We're not excited, Steve Quayle and I, about being right about all this. Yeah, I'm sitting here personally having to get ready, getting storable food and medical supplies and, and, and things here at the office and security plans and solar generators and gas generators because we're just hoping somehow people in our government or stop the globalist who are admitted foreign agents. Our own government, folks, is hacking. By the way, it's not the Russians. We've now confirmed that they did some earlier stuff. Uh, you know, patriots are the ones leaking the Soros stuff, the Hillary stuff, to, to, to WikiLeaks and everybody else. They're killing people that are leaking in. Uh, but we've never had so many leaks now that are actually very good quality, but super dangerous to even try to vet. Uh, I mean, that's above my pay grade, quite frankly, and even uh, because finally the government realizes, oh, my God, we've been set for self-destruct. It's sabotage. People finally get that they really are trying to ban the word mother and father and are doing it. They really are saying Christians are the enemy. They really are saying veterans are going to have to be rounded up and reeducated. And, and Hillary's even saying reeducation camps now. It's even on the news. They're, they're getting ready for something huge. They, they've got evil looks in their eyes. They're running around like chickens with their heads cut off in preparation. Suddenly, red brigades are popping up everywhere I go. I see communists and communist flags just running around giggling and laughing. Uh, the, uh, the foreign powers are trying to set up cop killer squads. You can clearly see we're being brought into something really nasty, and this isn't a beta test. That's what you're getting at here. And I just, Is there any way to try to avert this, and what do you think the timeline is if we're unable to stop it? Because, I mean, they admit shooting war is intensified between Russia and proxy army Ukraine with NATO. We are now fighting the Russians. It's been going on, but it's, it's, it's escalating now.
We've got video that nobody's seen in the West of Putin about to come up, translated. I, I'm not trying to scare people here. I'm telling you, folks. Well, can I tell you something? If, if everything we've told them gently, increasing the feverish pitch of giving them documents. See, again, this. Remember this. You're dealing, I'm dealing, we're dealing with, we're dealing with the remnant. You cannot wake up a, a, a big enough body of people to vote a difference. What it's going to take, and you asked me this too last time we were on the show together, is an awareness. Now, let me just say one thing about Amerigeddon. I told Gary, I said, Gary, Haven, I said, you've covered 35 issues that it's imperative that people get that DVD and send it to their loved ones or their doubted ones. Because the time that he you know, released it early through you exclusively, Alex, was timed with the headlines. There were probably, I don't know, 10, 12 headlines that I picked up on my website. The UN this, UN that, Obama this, Obama that, Lynch this, Lynch that. So the bottom line is, is that, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see something that is so timed, so specific to the time you're living in now, you better get that film. And I'm saying seriously, it is that good, it is that important, it is that timely, and I would say that, Alex, your special is good. It's not enough just to buy one and see one. Buy one, give it away, get it to the people that absolutely are kind of fence-sitters. And I, I'll say this, Alex, the, the spiritual realm of this is increasing. Every day on Drudge, more demon stuff, more, more horrific Satan stuff. They're back to eating people's faces off. I remember saying that 20 years ago, and you know, even you thought I was a little off, you know, off my rocker in those days. But the point is is that when you see something in the future, most people cannot grasp it because they don't yet see it playing out because they go into that but denial now, mode. But now it's gone from probability to almost certainty that we're right. seeing major wars and our elites are so crazy. Samantha Power is laughing about war with Russia. This is Putin a month and a half ago. We played this clip many times. We've got a new clip, but we've got to translate it into English. So that will be in a special report on the nightly news tonight where he's doing even more dire warnings just yesterday about the proxy army starting war with Russia. And, and George Soros admits he started the overthrow of Ukraine and the war with Russia. But then they tell us in our media, Russia started it. Russia didn't start it. So let's play this clip of Putin warning the world. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled in an irreversible direction? That is the problem. But they pretend like nothing's going on. I don't even know how to get through to you people anymore. And what do they say? Uh, oh, it's this is part of a defense potential, not the offensive weaponry, that these systems are meant to quote, prevent aggression. This is not the truth. This is incorrect. A missile defense system is part of a whole system of offensive military potential. And all this works as part of a whole that includes offensive missile launchers. And then he goes on One to say, complex block. do you realize the peril? Do you realize the danger? I'm not going to play it all because we've already played it like 10 times. But you'd think that'd be on U.S. news when the Russian president is talking about this and there's a shooting war going on. Instead, they're trying to teach five-year-olds how to be transsexuals, Steve Quayle. Well, again, I would call this the Judas News, okay? What basically is, and Alex, imagine, if you've got somebody to draw a cartoon, imagine a pedestal TV studio, NBC, CBS, ABC, with a bombed-out, destroyed New York, and you've got the, the television cameras on the set, but everything is cut off, everything is destroyed, and uh, the people are, you know, the people that are the broadcasters are all disheveled, you know, whether they're male or female, asking each other, well, do you think, what do you think this really means? That's that's exactly. I, I think people are are beyond uh, uh, mind control zombies. That's and, like Fox News this weekend goes coming up. Is the media biased against Donald Trump? And they came back and concluded it wasn't. Steve, that's supposedly yeah, I, conservative TV now. Right, and and I'll give you a good example. It's like it's like a group of vampire vampires at a vampire convention, okay? And one of them says, you know, uh, we we'd have a lot more fans if we didn't kill them all and drink their blood. They all vote basically. You know, that sounds like the weed public opinion on our side. The minute it turns dark, man, they're out, you know, chomping on the necks and sucking the blood of everybody. They are blood sucking parasites who have sucked the life 
out of the American people. The bankers are blood-sucking parasites that have taken the hope for the future. And they don't know the when to quit. Out. They don't know when to quit. They don't know when yeah. to quit. They no, well, to just... Can I tell you something? They can't because they're like jackals and hyenas, and they're like a bunch of uh, African uh, beasts, you know, on a dead carcass. See, that's what we're seeing, Alex, and that's what breaks my heart. Look, I wish I would have been wrong. And I'm sorry. That, somebody said, I'll tell you, these oh, hyenas yeah. are going to sit there and eat wildebeest till the nukes go off. They you just don't it. care. And, 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 and they're, they're feasting on the lazy flesh. Of, and, and I'm serious. And people don't understand No, you're right. Back this. in 70 seconds. Steve Quell's our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Powerful info. I'm telling you, this is not hyped. This is how much trouble we're in. And the average person's out there with soccer moms just, just sucking their thumb. By the way, you know, we have to crack a big nut every day here with over 50 crew members. Reporters, writers, researchers, switchers, producers, researchers, you know, investigative journalists. And then you got one maintenance guy and some customer service and the shipping department. I mean, that we're a small crew, but it's expensive. I mean, if, if I lived in New York City or something, we could have 15 people, not 50-something. We have a lot of contractors, too, more than 70 people total that make this uh, the, the, the ship sail every day. I'm not going to sit here and plug right now, but they just came in. We're offering... When you get two Amerigeddon's, the new film exclusively available, $5 million budget, uh, exposing the New World Order in a fiction account, near future, you get two of my films free. Well, the problem is we sold out of the films we were already offering free. So we had to change it again. And now we're about to sell out of Matrix of Evil and Fall of the Republic, so the new special is buy two copies and get two Alex Jones films free, Police State 4 and the Police State Trilogy. That's, that's four films, all of my Police State films and the two Amerigeddons for the price of the two Amerigeddons. So, uh, and that'll probably sell out real quick too, but I mean, I guess we're getting low on my DVDs because we're selling so many of these, so that's a godsend to help fund the operation, so thank you for your support. For the long segment's coming up, Steve Quell, but we got three minutes till break. Please continue, sir. I've never seen you on fire like this. I guess it's just the times we're living in. Well, Alex, we're about ready to see events that, with no pun intended, are going to go atmospheric. And outside of praying Christians, and I mean this, I believe with all my heart that what we're going to see is God supernaturally delivering people in places of this country. But years ago, I said on the radio, ask two specific areas of sin, so will their judgment be. We're seeing episodic quakes happening on the West Coast. We've always heard, oh, California is going to fall off into the ocean. We've seen so much Satanism. We've seen so much demon possession. And ladies and gentlemen, whether you believe it's real or not, this stuff is real. And Alex, that's the key. You can't just blame. Somebody wants to blame this faction or that faction. They want to blame the Jews. They want to blame the Jesuits. They want to blame the Catholics. They want to blame me. They want to blame you. But they don't get the fact that, look, it's not a question of blame. It's identifying the root of evil. And these people, and you've said it, and you've brought your whole, I guess you'd say, your whole view to this point, that there is a supernatural entity, a supernatural wisdom directing the total destruction of all morality, all values, borders, language, culture, and the... And it's out to get the country and the family and God, and particularly hates Christians. And if you expand on this... I mean, the globals will go out of their way to kill a Christian for no reason. Obama won't let Christians get out of Syria. And if you looked at it from a science fiction perspective, it's like an interdimensional invasion is basically what this is. Oh, really? And, and can I tell you something? Years ago, I said on talk radio, and this is important, real quick, that the unseen would become visible and that the, the, the things of men's nightmare would come into the physical realm. So when you see all the, all the, the if you will, the gorish, ghastly, everything Hollywood has uh, pretty much produced as leading us oh, to Oh, they admit time. now with all the Hollywood shows and Super Bowl things with all the Satanism, they believe they're bringing this power in. They admit they're doing rituals. Absolutely. It's ritual magic. It's serious. And by the way, the Satanists believe in the power of, of uh, the, the, the entity they serve. I wish the Christians would absolutely have a revelation from the living God that greater is he, the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's that a good point. I, I, I agree. Why are the Satanists, when we come back, suddenly coming out of the woodwork? Why are they being so obvious now? It's like, again, it's like all hell's breaking loose and it's only intensifying. 
Well, simply because the salt has lost its savor, and the light of the world, the gospel of Jesus Christ, has gone out. Now, people hate to hear me say that. They like to hear what I know, but they don't want to hear this talk about Jesus. Well, Jesus is the one that told us all this is going to happen in the book of Revelation. Well, I'll tell you this right now. I've been fighting the globalists for 25 years, and I tell you, there's one thing they hate, and that's the word, the name Jesus Christ. And I tell you, that's, that's, that's the power, and it's real. They hate it for whatever reason. You hate these and people don't you know, get it. You're off in your own la-la land, but your elite masters are a bunch of devil-worshiping, Lucifer-loving trash. We'll be back. Steve Quell's our guest for another 20 minutes or so. Then our crew joins us from on the ground in Milwaukee. They're about to come back. They were at a Trump rally last night, covered some of the uh, attempts by the communists. That's who the police said it was. The communists came from Chicago and stirred up a black cop shooting a black guy supposedly waving a gun they're saying the black cop though has a history of corruption and problems okay whatever just don't burn down your own neighborhood and shoot random people because of it uh, i mean you, you know you talk about mind control folks i don't get off on looking at people doing horrible things and say look at those bad people i feel better about myself but i don't like being criticized when i see people dragging whites out of cars beating them up calling them racist names killing people you know, in other cases, or shooting up a black lady's car because she, you know, bumped into Black Lives Matter people. It is this incredible entitlement of a bunch of dumb teenagers who just want to swagger around and be thugs. And all you're going to do is make the police hate you that much more and cause a bigger problem. We do not want to have a war with the police. We want to get our communities under local control. They're going to use this crisis to bring in the Strong City Initiative, UN-run police. That's mainstream news. Quite frankly, I'm pinching myself at how accurate I've been. And I used to think I was going out on a limb a lot of stuff. And usually it turns out it's worse than I said. People accuse me of exaggeration. No. No. Steve Quayle now. Who I never thought Steve Quayle was crazy. I, I thought... You know, this guy's a little uh, eccentric, and, 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 you know, this is just, just you know, really almost like science fiction. Geoengineering, aluminum oxide. He was the first guy I heard 20-plus years ago talking about they're spraying aluminum. It's all admitted now. The Department of Energy admits $5 billion a year to spray aluminum on us to, quote, test guarding us from the sun, and then the aluminum level's rising and the plants are dying everywhere. I drive out in the hill country. It's not Oak Wilt. I've talked to the uh, horticulturalist. I've talked to the arborist. And they say, no, Alex, there's the aluminum in the soil. I mean, it's like space aliens are running the planet trying to kill everything. It, the planet's being killed in front of us in slow motion. They're genetically splicing everything. They're playing God, just like the Bible said. And I, I, I never lost faith in God. But, you know, I got sick of being drugged to church twice a week when I was a kid. And my dad pensioned me to stay up, you know, in three-hour church services. Uh, and, no, oh, we've got to go to the, you know, minister to the, you know, to the, old folks home this weekend. Oh, great. Another Christmas, you know, giving homeless people soup. I mean, I'll admit it. I wasn't some angel. I wanted to, you know, go play baseball or, you know, get in bare knuckles fist fights or go pick up, you know, the cheerleader down the street. But I thank God my parents did that because I got a real Christian education. And by that, I mean really caring about people. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, sitting there on Christmas Eve, freezing your ass off in downtown Dallas, feeding homeless people is not fun when you're 14 years old. Um, but I tell you, Comparing somebody like my parents that are so good and would never screw anybody over. I thought of myself as like nasty and evil compared to them. I look at the enemy and who they are. They live to hurt innocent people. They live to lie. They live to be dishonorable. And that's why they've got the jump on us is good people just cannot imagine. You know, Steve said he was a racy guy in film school and doing wild stuff. It almost seems like God does kind of pick the bad boys to take on the New World Order, though, Steve. And, I, and, I, and, and that's what I want to say to the other bad boys and girls out there. A lot, a lot of times the devil will try to convict your heart as the accuser and say, you've done bad stuff in your life, and you've been a mean person. You've had hateful thoughts, and you, you know, didn't need to stomp on that guy's head after he was already down, or you didn't need to you know, do this or that. But that's the devil trying to make us feel guilty so we don't get involved. Look, God forgives us all as soon as we really do repent. And then once we take action against evil, but I find so many of the real people that could take down the new world order say, I just can't do it. I'm too evil. I've done bad things. God doesn't care as long as you repent of it and take action. Right, Steve? Here's the thing. 
the, uh, there is no, all sin is forgivable through the blood of Jesus Christ and repentance, you know. And look, I was no, I, I was I was out of control, okay. I've shared my testimony on major shows. I was too. Just, I was too. I was, I was out yeah, of control. And, and look, I'm not proud of it, but the Bible says he who's forgiven much loves much, okay. And I'm telling Chronicle everybody son. out there, Alex, you're saying the same thing right now. We're in agreement. There is nobody listening to us beyond the grace and the forgiveness of the living God. When God said God's love, I got news for you. You can't say that in the uh, Islamic faith that God is love, you know. You can't say that. Jesus said no greater love has this and a man lays down his life for a friend. And then Jesus, you know, and he, let me just deal with the name of Jesus. Where did it go wrong? You can see, you can name any name, you can have any rock star, you can have any porn, you can have any uh, words that are so uh, uh, disgusting put out there, and all the different acts between all the different 31 flavors of uh, non-human uh, designation, but at the end of the day, Alex, the thing is, is there's only one name that's hated beyond all names, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, they hated me without a cause, they're going to hate you, but you ask why it's this way, because the churches, you know, I, I finally figured out, I think just the other day that the word puke and pew have the same sound, you know, and yes. I call the pastors that are sellouts to Satan pukes in the pulpit. You know, look, God never wanted his people to be entertained. He wanted them to be changed. And and that's what we're talking about. So I hear, you know, the most important thing that I can tell everybody for preparation, and as one of the founders of the prep movement, you know, decades ago, 30 some years ago now, the bottom line is get right with Jesus because it's not enough to just, you know, look, they're coming to kill a lot of us. If they had their way, they'd kill all of us. But it, Jesus said, don't fear he who can kill your body, but rather fear him who can send you to hell. And see, there's no fear of God, okay? But I want to go to one more rule of radical, because this is it. You brought up the police, okay? If you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. Violence from the other side can win the public to your side, because the public sympathizes with the underdog. I have been pleading. I have friends in law enforcement, so do you. I have friends in the military, so do you. I have friends, oh, and boy, do I have enemies on the opposite side. But the point being is I, I warned that civil war was coming. I warned that the whole point would be to turn the police against the people and the people against the police. And I said to both of them, I said, don't, don't buy that. I said to the black gangs, I said to the Latino gangs, this is years ago, 15 years ago, don't buy it. You're going to be used. And when they're no, done... I remember you, you, you said it all first, Steve. You've been the most accurate. It's crazy. Well, I, I would say this. It's because that was my calling in God. You know, and all I'm saying, look, I, I tell people, look, don't believe me, but you can do the same thing, Alex. You can present videos. You can present, in essence, every video you've done, every video I've I sat I here do. with Nightline and the host of ABC Nightly News and showed him six clips of world leaders calling for planetary government, world government, global governance. He looked at me and he said, Alex, that's different world government than what you're talking about. And then at dinner, he admitted, look, you're not a bad guy. I like you. I just got to do this for my, this is the job I do. And right, I just well, couldn't I believe that it's just like, wow, you know? Yeah. That's like that's like Judas going to Jesus after betraying and saying, you know, uh, Jesus, I, I was low on some cash, so I just needed 30 pieces of silver, and forgive me because I really didn't mean it. Well, look, betrayals, betrayals. How do they sell out so easy? I mean, I don't get how you can put a gun to my head and say, kill an innocent child, we're going to kill it. I'd say, pull that freaking trigger. I just, I, and it's not that I'm even, I just don't get why people you know, want I, acceptance. I had a, I had a hey, I got to share this with you. You're going to love this. I had a meeting with a Russian spy master. I won't use his name. Very cool guy. Uh, set up for me by a former agent of his, uh, you know, he, the opposite side. He was with the Central Intelligence Agency. And, you know, the guy looked at me, a very powerful man. This was in Reno. And he said to me, he said, ah, you Americans. He said, you betray your country for so little money. He says, at least when we do betray our country, we do it for millions. You do it for tens of thousands. You know, and, and that spoke to me, Alex, because I understood why. I mean, I'm not saying sell out anything, but what I'm telling you is this, is that when you control all of the uh, dialogue, when you absolutely give false evidence appearing real, that's what fear is, obviously, an acronym. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, they question our sources. We bust our asses, forgive the language. That would be the burrows that we bring all of our burdens in on just to cover it. The point being is we do this, we go out, we do 
massive amounts of research. We spend the money we make, and how many times you heard this? You guys just sell fear to sell your books or to sell your gold. You're a fear monger, blah, blah, blah. No, listen, what we're doing is fighting for the last vestiges of humanity. Yeah, that normally revolutionaries rob banks and stuff, you know, and yep. ISIS sells sex slaves, you know, to fund themselves. We sell high-quality products to fund ourselves. And I'm just, I, I just, but the good news is the audience gets that's all a load of crap. I mean, all I want is more money to get more people and a bigger organization to fight these people, not because I want to be number one, but because I want to defeat the New World Order. That's why I'm so excited behind the scenes to be talking to some of the biggest new media out there and to know they're actually patriots. And I'm just telling them, hey, you find the people that are better than I am and better crew, I'm ready to just, just turn my, 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 my power over to you. I, I am ready right now to step back. Uh, Paul Watson's maybe halfway there. Uh, and, but he just didn't have the stamina. I mean, I am ready right now. I do not want to do this. I do not want to be the tip of the spear. I mean, I would imagine, Steve, you get exhausted sometimes. I mean, I mean but, but it's a burning, isn't it? Like Ezekiel and the bones. Yeah, it's just like fire sharp on my bones. And listen, Alex, I said this. I, have, I had this conversation probably yeah, at least once a week for every week I've been on talk radio. God, are you sure I'm the right guy to be doing this, Lord? I have you that know, conversation I mean, every day. I, I tell yeah. you, I just want somebody else to come in here. Yeah, me too. Uh, other and people are so jealous deal. of other media. and it's like, it's like they're speaking Martian to me or something. It's like we're not in competition with each other. We, no, are, and, we have and, the and, new and, world order that wants to literally kill 80-plus percent of the public publicly. A, a huge planet. Our sperm counts down over 90 percent. Breast cancer is up 3,000 percent. We're dying. We're under attack. This is not about who's the biggest. This is about defeating the new world order. We're seeing genocide. We're seeing suicide. We're seeing fratricide. We're absolutely seeing everything. Now, here's the deal. The devil wants to kill every last man, woman, and child. The devil wants to destroy the planet. So he's got the willing chemtrail people in jail. And, and you look at it, Steve, there's no doubt it's the devil. The, the, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean the look, devil. the devil didn't exist, the, then the mass consciousness or whatever of the elite does. Because every, they'll go, as I said, a million miles out of their way to screw somebody when it doesn't even help them. They're evil. Sorry, They're go ahead. evil. And, and that's the thing. How does evil, free will, people argue that. But here's the deal, Alex. The, the elite are being promised they get off this planet to a new, if you will, Eden and you said that 20 years ago, and now Ray Kurzweil and all the top Google yep. people and all of them say, I'm going to live forever. I'm going to merge with machines. Well, if that's the case, then, but they go, oh, but we got to kill all of you first. It's like their yep. God tells them, you got to kill everybody. And when there's 100 of you left, we're going to merge and become gods and blast off to another planet. I mean, is that, right, I mean, why the do they buy here's into that? Well, they buy into it because they don't ever have to face eternal judgment. Every every headline from the billionaires, what's their number one concern? To live forever. They got all the money, so they're going to work to live forever. Number two, they're going to be able to, if you will, that appetite that you see that they always want more and more and more, the best uh, definition for lust, okay, power lust. And this is what it's about. I had a very rich man once tell me, Steve, it's not about the power. This is a guy who's dead now. He, says, he said, it's not about the money. He said, it's always about the power and control over others' lives. And he said, it, it, it is, if you will, bragging rights when you... And the problem is, a really powerful man doesn't want to run other people's lives. He wants to teach them the skills he has. Yeah, absolutely. But Alex, here's the deal. The most evil... Jesus said it. Not, and when I say the love of money, I'm talking about the control of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. The control of money is a control of all evil. When we talk about bankers, and we've gone through everything from the Federal Reserve, you know, Committee of 300, Jekyll Island, all that stuff. When it's all said and done, people are seeing it right now. The middle class is dead. So what does Hillary Clinton want to say? She said, I'm going to tax the middle class. Why don't you just come right out and say she wants them all destroyed, turned into soil and green? Take the Rothschilds. They released in a magazine review three years ago photos of themselves at a castle doing eyes wide shut stuff. They're throwing it in our face. Right, and, and here's the thing that most people don't understand is that when you're talking about the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, when you're talking about the most powerful, and by the way, there's even money people behind the scenes that are as wealthy, if not wealthier than they are. They're, house, they're not household names. They haven't even been brought up in our circles, but there are... I know I, who they I are. It, I mean, a lot of it is the black nobility formerly from Italy uh, right. and, and some other... But Alex, it's also fallen angels. People don't understand that when Satan rebelled against God, 
that literally a third of the angels fell with them. And they can't get it through their head that even the Apostle Paul said they can transform themselves as, as angels of light. They're, they're, they're angels of darkness. Angel means messenger. But the point being is, is that now we have all the transhumanism stuff. We've got singularity. We've got... We're, we're they're getting the us ready to see heavy-duty stuff. Yeah, and, and, and you know, when I wrote my book, and I'm, I want to make a pitch for this, because I don't know anybody who tagged genetic Armageddon from the Christian-believing patriot side uh, earlier than I did. Nobody. Okay? And, I, and, and the same thing is with the book Xenogenesis. Xenogenesis is my last uh, book on that whole subject matter of what man. Here it is in a nutshell, 30 seconds. They want every man, woman, and child that is of uh, God creation through their you know, ancestors dead. They want to insert demon-possessed robots. They gonna, this is going to make uh, Christine, uh, Stephen King's novel, seem like Little League. They want to bring on the new man, the uberman, the ubermensch, and they want that to be totally void of God. They want none of the restraints of God. They want none of the morality of God. What they want is basically a Caligulan orgy of... Uh, intelligence and and fulfillment for their unbridled lust and it all goes right back to demons that's why there's a story out that susan duclos wrote on my site and she's showing one of those cards you know the illuminati card game and i forgot about that card but it's the unleashing of demons by the way why don't you that guy literally has his office two miles from mine he will never talk to me i've tried for 10 years to talk to him and it, it is uncanny though, those cards uh, yeah, he won't talk to me either. He, he, I've, I've tried to. Now, Steve yeah. Quayle, we're almost out of time. I. Yep. But Alex, here, let me say this. Our new DVD is really critical. It's not just about ancient stuff. Orwell said, they who control the past, you know, determine the future. Got it. I say the greatest cover-up and cover-over history is the cover-up. No, it's cover True Legends, the series dot com. True Legends, episode two, The Unholy Sea. And next week, we're going to have you in studio to cover that, at least part of the in-studio interview. Uh, we're going to play some of those clips here, stevequell.com as well. Steve, listen, looking at this, it's clear. These elites are into degeneracy. And people think of degeneracy as a guy wanting a hot woman or whatever. Degeneracy is wanting to blow the planet up as a sacrifice, wanting to override it, being told you're going to get total power. And we see Peter Thiel, who I'm not saying is a bad guy, he does some good libertarian things, saying he wants to live forever and obsessed with ambrosia and the young of the blood and blood transfusions. The media is acting like that's something new. But the Queen of England's mother, before she died for decades, would get whole blood, whole body blood transfusions every month. I mean, that's, that's BBC News. What is this uh, vampiric obsession we're seeing? Well, the life is in the blood, okay? And that's, that's a basic premise of Christianity. That's why when Jesus shed his blood, when people, and this is cool, this is the cool part of, and Alex, I'm sorry that, you know, you had to go through what you went through, but it made you who you are today. You see, the blood is where the life is. So a vampire, when he sucks the blood out of something, he sucks the life out. That's what's happened to the economy, the vampire economy. That's what's happened to our lives. That's what big uh, Medicare and Medicaid and it's all slavery. the... Uh, they're all doing they're sucking our blood so here was the answer the answer is for everyone to just ask honestly especially the atheists and agnostics jesus if you're real reveal yourself to me because i can tell you this there is no place in history and i'm a pretty uh, uh what well, would say verse researcher on that where i can see that as it pertained to the people of god when god's people cried out unto the lord he delivered them against insurmountable odds and that's why they when put they in all these state-run fake churches that are totally controlled you go in them you feel the spirit of evil the big you know most of the mega churches if a mega church isn't evil they try to shut it down those are the good guys folks usually when you see that happening and so god understands this obviously that the, that, that the, so you have the blood of christ that you take on uh, spiritually genetically fills you so that you're immune from them at least your spirit if not your body and so we have to ask god because god's free will and like the devil we have to ask god into us to basically uh transmute us and turn us uh, into something else so that we transcend this well yeah and 
and, and, and in quantum physics it's called superposition because it, the scripture says in Jesus Christ, in him we live and move and have our being. And, you know, we're seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. Well, how does that fit on earth? That's exactly what you just said. We're talking about a dimensional ship. We're talking sure, about Sure, and let's expand, though. We have that. to ask God through the dimension to come into us because God's free will. In closing in two minutes, I remember the New York Times when Prometheus came out, the last alien movie. And then the brother of the director went and jumped off a cliff the next day or off a bridge. A lot of weird stuff going on there. Uh, that in that film, they, and the New York Times admitted that this, however you call it, transpermia is actually what most elites believe and what genetic engineers believe because they've now looked at the genetics and know that it didn't just accidentally happen. So secretly they admit that most of the globalists in the New York Times actually believe we were put here by aliens. Yes, and that's what our unholy seed, the DVD number two, is all about. It's preparing the people and the Catholic Church, and because of Catholicism, Roman Catholicism is such a major part of the planet uh, belief system, they're preparing. The Catholic Church is leading the way to accept an alien savior. And i got to tell you, from all over the world, including Catholics, they're saying, now I get it. They love the unholy seed DVD, and it's true legends of Syria. Oh, I was in Rome last year, and right up there by the Vatican, they have the Vatican Observatory and the Pope says get ready for the aliens and could they do a fake alien arrival though yeah well and, and see that's the deal when when in our in our DVD going to mount and by the way Alex it's that important if you were to say to me okay Steve I'm 65 okay I just turned 65 last week or two weeks ago the bottom line is this in my opinion if you take everything I know everything I've done everything I've stay there come back in two, two minutes we're going to Jakari Jackson Rob doing I want to finish up with this we're at a critical point, though. I mean, this is a historic point. Now, to be clear, I already knew that the head of Breitbart was looking at joining the Trump campaign two months ago. I'm just going to leave that alone at that. Bannon reached out to me a few times. I was so busy, I never got back with him. I, I should have. But he now is the head of the campaign. But this is to bring a lot of Internet modern knowledge. Uh, Manafort is needed to stop the steal at the electoral level and also uh, in the general election to watch for fraud. He worked for Reagan, you name it, did a great job. So this is not even a demotion for Manafort. Now, I made some phone calls this morning, and confirmed all this when I got up and noticed that this announcement had been made. I heard about it months ago. It was being looked at. And uh, we're going to see if Stone can pop in. He's been blowing my phone up for an hour. I hadn't checked it. I guess he's been on the phone with Nico, sent him this. Uh, but Bannon is awesome, great hire, patriot, a true nationalist who really understands the immigration issue. Not a shakeup. No one fired or is leaving. 100% additive. Uh, an addition that Manafort welcomed. I mean, he wants the help. Um, and again, Stone writes for Breitbart. Kellyanne Conway has uh, excellent and solid and awesome, and Trump listens to her. These are all anti-New World Order patriot globalists. It just shows who Trump is. The fact he's been friends with Bannon for decades. See, I mean, Trump's a sleeper patriot. That's why they're so pissed. They've got a dossier on him. Uh, Washington Post, uh, New York Times claim that it, it is a demotion for Manafort. It's BS being peddled by loser Corey Lewandowski, the architect of the Trump uh, defeat in Wisconsin, North Dakota, and Colorado. New York Times attacks undermines Trump campaign manager. It is because uh, the Mexican owner of the Times is the largest owner of the Clinton Foundation. The whole Russia, Putin, Trump, Manafort charge is Hillary, is, is, is bogus. DNC leaks by... Uh, Crucifer 2 and WikiLeaks, not Russians. So that's his talking points to me. I've never found him to be inaccurate. That guy, is, he doesn't, I read quotes him in the 80s. He said, listen, my leaks are always good because you just might have a fake leak. You don't ever get to leak again. And so I'm going to see if we can get Stone on, but there's just major shakeups. I want to go to uh, Joe Biggs and others on the ground about to leave Wisconsin, covering three days of rioting and the media hyping it when there wasn't too much rioting the last few days. Uh, and, of course, the Trump rally last night. We've got some clips of that. But finishing up uh, with Steve Quayle, who'll be in studio with us for two hours on Monday. Steve, I've never had a chance to meet you in person. Uh, things have gotten so... I know your face hadn't hardly been seen in decades until the last year or two. And, and that's why you made these films. You've decided to go public uh, despite security issues, I know, because I think you understand. I'm putting words in your mouth, but am I right? You know we're coming down to the wire, so you're doing your maximum effort. Absolutely, Alex. So we are at the wire. I don't think it's a process anymore. I think it's a flashpoint now, okay? And so, again, uh, I want to share every 
to share with your audience, and I, I look forward to meeting you and obviously, uh, you know, and being in studio with you and Gary. But also, I, I want to thank you for the, the team you've put together because personally, I really like Joe Biggs. I don't know, you know, I don't know them personally, but I think, you, you know, I think you're hated by the mainstream because you have something that they lost a long time ago. That's called in investigative journalism. And, and Alex, when I say that, it's a genuine compliment. People that know me accuse me of being blunt, unkind, unloving, but I don't kiss anybody's anything. But I believe the Bible is, it is accurate when it says, give credit to whom credit do honor to whom ours do and look here's the thing when people you know say whatever they say to you about me or vice versa or this or that i ask them i said who are you you nameless anonymous troll what have you done so i'm really excited you know and and uh i think i've been interviewed by uh david and i think i've been i don't know that i've ever been interviewed by jacari but the bottom line is i'm excited because look just as and i'm no mad drudge but i want to shake your hand and and, and i'm not you know, one of those guys that does something like this, if, if it weren't for our mutual friend Gary Haven, I would never probably come to your studio. And, and it's not because of you. It's just because of all the attendant security issues, you know. And obviously now that, that you know, that's out there, you'll have to take some more uh, precautions. Don't worry. This place is an arm camp. Nobody knows where it is. Yep. Good. But anyway, so, you know, I want to thank you. And again, Alex, I want to, I just got to tell you something, you know, it, there are millions of people who have gotten it. I'm getting emails from law enforcement in Canada and around the United States that say they listen, they, they're they grateful. And it, it, you well, know, we're grateful I, to them. It's very, very humbling, but it's scary to be right in the eye of the storm. Well, I look forward no, to it's a, Yeah, you want to be in the eye of the storm, okay? Because remember this, that that's a good place to be because even Elijah the prophet was in the eye of the storm and it didn't touch him okay absolutely well stevequell.com we will talk to you next week very rare to have you live in studio anywhere in fact i don't think uh, how many decades has it been since you've been live in studio somewhere well i can say this probably 25 years i haven't so just in the last uh, six months i have yeah it's, it's exactly it's unprecedented that at this time you are really getting even more physically active out there uh, in the field steve i can't wait to uh to uh, sit here with you in studio next week. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Alex. God bless everybody.